Hello, uh, Simon Chilembo again. We do the last passages on depression from my book, Machona Awakening, Home in Grey Matter, um, chapter, um, chapter 18, Depression in the Diaspora. It's over now. Depression befalls us due to real or perceived lack both material and conceptual. The paradox is that if and when these wants and needs are met and satisfied on the one level, we almost without exception always want more and more to ever rise in levels of magnitudes and complexities. Such is how humanity is ever drawn or pushed forward to ever more and more sophisticated modes of social engineering to manipulate human behavior and attitudes. The secret is in knowing when more is too much, both with respect to numbers and time. It is the element of time that will determine whether or not the tortuous journey of depression will have been worth the often extreme individual and collective sacrifices in the end. Depression will add value to one's or societal life to the extent that it's allowed to complete its cycle, no matter how long it takes, resources and tolerance capacity permitting. Ask me, a child born, raised and bred in the diaspora, I know. Depression is my darkest oldest friend beyond which abodes all the answers and solutions I need for finding and living at peace with all the mysteries of my life as well as with the spirits of my ancestors and with my God. Baushebile Batu means people are looking at you this was a street vibe line that was used a lot when I was growing up in South Africa in the early 1970s. It means that, uh, you know, whatever you do every day of your life, you know, society is watching you. So uh, this next passage is uh, inspired by that. Neighborly concern. Simon, I am worried about you, man. I never see you go out. I never see people come to your house. How can you expect to function in this, in this country if you don't socialize, man? You really worry me. Mr. Van Furen, my old neighbor, white, because this is South Africa, expresses concern. Touched, I reply. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, but oh no, I'm fine, very fine, actually. I am happy. You know very well that uh, I go out on regular walks around our neighborhood and I fight with your dogs from time to time. I am busy with my own things every day. Mr. Van Furen. Uh, no, it's not the same. You must go out and talk to people, man. All you do is you lock yourself up in your house if you're not working in your gardens. Ahman, I worry about you. Uh, well, sir, <laughs> uh, I'm doing a lot of things inside my house when you don't see me outside. Apart from domestic chores, I do a lot of writing and reading. I'm doing great things in there that people cannot see. What do you write about? Various subjects and themes of interest to me. But most exciting is that I think I have at last found how to go about writing uh, working with a book inspired by my late father's life, as well as others of his generation of migrant laborers in South Africa. Very, very interesting. But I still think uh, you must meet people, man. Hey, I have to go. Uh, there is a bright sizzling in the garden behind. My wife is waiting. Bon appetit, Menier. Uh, never keep a lady waiting. What I didn't tell Mr. Van Furen, my neighbor, was that I had been suffering an ongoing rough round of depression when I came back to South Africa from Norway in July 2013. 
the unexpected new set of shocking challenges I found when I got back home to Mama went on to worsen the condition. Trouble in paradise doubled. Because of the intimate relationship that I have with depression, I have, since my childhood days, devised ways to live with it each time it casts its worrisome, huge, dark cloud over my world. I have learned to respect my depressions, embracing them with gallantry each time. No resistance, no fight, no struggle, just play along, just dance like a gentleman, all by myself, ain't misbehaving. Two things have always worked in my favor in this regard, especially in my adult years. My intellect and the presence of an ever strong, ever loyal, supportive set of a few individuals, both in Europe and South Africa. Fortunately, I have a natural knack for thinking about things, about life and living. I have always sought to find answers and explanations for myself as to why and how people behave in particular ways in given situations. It has never been important whether my conclusions are right or wrong. The most important factor has always been whether I can make sense or not of the behavior that I observe. If, as necessary, I can, from all this, find workable strategies and solutions for myself for dealing effectively with outcomes and consequences of the observed behavioral phenomena, then I'm happy. I have got my life back. I've got friends. I am alive again. I rule my thoughts and feelings again. Wisdom is my companion. In my soul, I'm free. I'm back. If and when you recognize depression, embrace it, respect it. All professionals know that it is a mammoth task, but not impossible to keep suicide at bay. Do seek help before despair takes the upper hand. I wish you well. Be well. Stay strong. And thank you for your attention.